The following program may contain coarse language. Viewer discretion is advised. The following. Ten. So at the end of the ten, I should say applause, and then we're going to start the show. Sound good? Okay, great. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Coming to you from the London Music Hall in beautiful London, Ontario, this is Q live at the Junos. It is Canada's music's biggest weekend. Today we have for you performing live with his full band, Bahamas. London's own Oscar nominee, the author and screenwriter, Emma Donahue is here. Performances from Juno-nominated Kaya Cater. Juno-nominated Donovan Woods. From the Juno Cup, Blue Rodeo's Jim Cuddy and Olympic gold medalist Natalie Spooner are here. One of this year's Comedy Album of the Year nominees, Shanti Morostica, is performing live. Plus one of the biggest breakout acts of the last year, Snotty Nose Rez Kids are here to perform live. All that and more coming up on this special edition of Q, live at the Junos. All right, so to kick things off, I'm excited to bring out one of this country's finest songwriters. He has assembled one of the most talented groups of musicians, uh, for my money, you'll find in this country. His latest record, Earth Tones, is nominated for four Juno Awards this year, including Adult Alternative Album of the Year and Songwriter of the Year, which happens to be a category he's won before. Other nominations include Video of the Year for No Depression for Ali Eisner, Recording Engineer of the Year for Robbie Lakritz. Earth Tones was even up for a Grammy last month. And we're so thrilled that you're going to hear some of that Juno and Grammy-nominated music for you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, performing the song No Expectations, live at the London Music Hall, please give it up for Afi Yervinen, a.k.a. Bahamas. Thank you. 
gentlemen, one more time, give it up for Bahamas. We got Jason Tate on drums, Darcy Yates on bass, Felicity Williams and Robin Dan on vocals, and the great Christine Bougie on the lead guitar on that one. Give her a round of applause, too. And sitting next to me right now, we have Afi. Hi, Afi. How you doing, man? Very good. I need headphones, man. No, nah, we'll I be all right. Cool. We're going to be oh, all right. I never right. look cool. Headphones aren't going to change that. And I just don't think these are doing the make look cool job on me. You know? I don't know, man. No, I'm pretty I, sharp up I here. I feel like Casey Kasem here, you know? I feel like I'm going to do a long distance dedication at any minute, you know? Nothing wrong with that. Does, does winning Songwriter of the Year before, does that give you, is there a little less pressure this time around? Um, I've felt like a winner all my life. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, at the risk of sounding uh, arrogant, I have had the fortune to go to the Junos many times. Yeah. And lost more than I've won, but winning is pretty sweet. Yeah. And now, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here, especially I get to share it with my band. I usually come to these things by myself, so it's nice to be here with the whole band. And and uh, my wife's here, so it's kind of like a, it's like a, it's like a Ford. All, four night all inclusive uh, paid vacation in London, Ontario. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. That sounds pretty good to me. Pretty good. Um, and you're, all, I should say though, you are up, uh, maybe as opposed to other years, you're up against Sean Mendez this year for Songwriter of the Year. Sorry, I'm uh, against Sean Mendez? Yes, yeah, so you, you versus. Sh oh. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's just the two of you in the category. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a boxing match, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to yeah, be Yeah, no. well, jeez. Well, then they probably already gave him the trophy, but you know what? Sean Mendez ain't coming to London, Ontario, is he? Oh my uh -uh. God. You heard it here first. I'm throwing shade at Sean Mendez. Imagine, imagine if I just started playing his music right now and yeah. he walked out with a steel chair. I actually chair. really like his music. I actually wrote a song which I thought was quite sexy, and I don't have the ability to sing those songs, so I thought Sean Mendez might be a good candidate to uh, do one of those tunes. Well, you know, and I know if he's listening, we're, which we're, he's not. Sean Mendez is the biggest Q fan I've ever met in my Mendez. entire life. He's yeah. a very sweet Him young and man. Selena Gomez, they sit around listening to Q all day. They're like, yeah. oh, wow. That's an interesting interview with Harrison Ford's makeup artist. Holy smokes. Um, all, all jokes aside, though, you know, what does, it, does it, what does it mean to be nominated for a Juno for you? I mean, it's, it's just, uh, the truth is I spend most of my time traveling outside of Canada. Uh, we tour, obviously, a ton in the U.S. and in Europe and Australia, all over the world, really. Really fortunate to get to travel a ton. And so, you know, ironically, I only played maybe 10, 15 shows a year here. Yeah. And so to be recognized in any way at home, you know, where I live is, is, is really special and, and means a lot. And, and you moved away from your home recently. You're living out in the, I'll just say, I'm not going to give away your address here, but you're living out, you're living out in the East Coast, my yes. neck of the woods. Yes. I like nature. And uh, so some people move for work. Some people move for love. I moved for trees and rocks and water. That's what I like. Yeah. And jobs. Yes, yeah. some people move for jobs. That's yeah, true. I'm jobs fortunate to, to get to work in London, Ontario, mostly. <laughs> We're playing a show in this very venue. I don't believe it's sold out yet. Hint, hint. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. But, uh, let's, anyway. pretend, let's pretend it's not true. Just cut that out of the show. Pick up your Bahamas. We'll do two versions. Ready? Okay. Show sold out, hey? Isn't that great? Wow. I know. Fantastic. And then ready? 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 Ah, oh, man, still a couple tickets left to go, but you'll sell her out. Oh, yeah, no, for no sure. Problem, no, no problem, no problem, for sure. Um, but how are you finding living out? Because, you know, I think about all of the um, East Coast musicians who I came up with who had to move to Toronto mm -hmm. to make it in the music industry. You know, how, how are you finding um, creating, just being away from... Uh, well, I love it, you know, just, um, I just, yeah, like I said, I just love being outside, and there's just so many opportunities to do that out there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I grew up in, sort of half in Finland, half in Canada, riding my bike and fishing, and, and I really just sort of had a great childhood that way, so I think it's a great place to be. Uh, it's a great place to be a dad, and it certainly seems to be a lot of fun for my kids. You, know? if you find much time to write new music, you know, with the, with the added um, no. role of being a no. dad? No. No? <laughs> no. There's no time. But uh, it doesn't seem to matter. Turns out you don't need a lot of time. You just need to uh, be more efficient with the time you have. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, I love the idea of going away on some retreat to find myself and have the songs come, but that's just not, hasn't been my um, hasn't been my experience yet. So I've also had people tell me that like the more restrictions you can put on yourself as a songwriter, like if you could say I have 15 minutes to do this and I, I can't do this later, mm -hmm. or you know I have this guitar I can't use, you know I can't go downstairs and get another one because I might wake the kid up. Yeah, that could actually improve the the absolutely process. absolutely yeah absolutely. Well, you know it's just. Uh, we're spoiled for options w in everything with life, you know? Yeah. So 
if you have 10 incredible restaurants to choose from, that can be, that can be oh, that can be tough. Yeah. Life can be hard. But if there's just one option, then you say, well, we're either going there or we're not. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I don't know. I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do things to sort of narrow my options, and that seems to bring out creativity for sure. You know, I think one thing that probably helps with that is I think, honest to God, you do have maybe the best band in the country right now. I agree. Yeah, don't you think, yeah. guys? Aren't they incredible? Yeah. But I think about you, like when I first met, when I first heard about you, you were playing as a sideman to a lot of different musicians, a side mm -hmm. person, I should say, to a lot of different musicians. You were, you were, you were kind of in the back of the bars I was seeing playing a guitar. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's, do you think that's impacted how you choose people to play with? Um, yeah, probably. I'm not sure if there's a direct, something that, that I rec uh, reference directly, but um, yeah, I mean, I had really positive experiences working for other people and and playing in other people's bands. I really sort of. I never really felt like I had to cut my teeth, right. like some other musicians paid their dues. I, I just never did that. Right. Um, <laughs> I got to travel and play music, and, and I thought the quality of the music that I was playing was very, very good. And, and um, so, you know, I just I, I feel very fortunate. I sort I guess what I learned is if you just surround yourself with really good people, then it can make the worst day the best day. And I mean, I know that's an obvious thing to say, but but um, there's so much time away from home, so you really want to just be with people that you like. And, um, you know, I'm lucky to have that. You know, if anyone ever leaves, I got two words that might be able to help you out, though. Sean Mendes. Sean Mendes. <laughs> you know, I think he can do it all. I wonder if Sean Mendes would have me in his band. Do you think? He's, I think he he's would. He's probably not short on, you know, the most expensive guitar player in L.A. Is probably has that job already, right? I talked to him like a couple of days ago. Yeah. Pretty normal guy from Pickering. I think, yes. he, I think he could do no, it. No, I know. I know. I'm waiting for the call, Sean. Sean, as you're listening to this, give us a call uh, and uh, give us a call. We're live on stage. Yeah, right give now. us a yeah. call. Yeah, give us Tom a call. Tom and I have a, a, what do you call it, a party line now. Yeah. Yeah. 10 percent. Yeah. Okay, good. Ladies and gentlemen, Bahamas, give him another round of applause. Right on. Thank you. If you want to see more of Sean, uh, Sean of Bahamas, he'll be on tour throughout the next month. He'll be back here at the London Music Hall on Tuesday, March 26th. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Bahamas. St. Marie, and you're listening to Q. We are circling, circling together. We are singing, singing our hearts on. This is family, this is unity, this is celebration, this is saving. Okay, so I'm really excited for you to hear from some more Juno nominees throughout the show today. But before we get to more live music, we figure out we had to bring out one of London, Ontario's own. Someone who calls this beautiful city home. After kickstarting her writing career across the pond in Ireland, her move to Canada helped solidify her status as an award-winning author, playwright, and screenwriter. Her best-selling novel, Room, was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. That book became a massive film, which earned several Academy Award nominations. She even scored an Oscar nod herself for Best Adapted Screenplay. But when she's not walking that red carpet down in Hollywood, she spends most of her time right here at home in London, Ontario. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to London's own Emma Donahue. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. You too. You know, radio's not always like this. The no. The screaming crowds, the bright lights. Not for you, maybe? No. For me, every day, every day in my damp, dark recording studio in Toronto with Michael Enright banging at the door saying, I need to get in, you know? That's what it feels like every single day. And usually it doesn't matter what you wear, but tonight I had to wear my son's London, Ontario t-shirt. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, thanks for making the big, long trip to be here today. I appreciate that. It was raining. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I understand one of the things you love about living here is how productive you get to be, is that right? You know, if I was in some big, glitzy, international, mega city of the 21st century, there'd be a lot to distract me. But as it is, I've had 21 years here and have written quite a lot because there's not quite so much getting in the way. <laughs> That's a compliment, right? I think so. Yeah, I that, think that, so. we're going to call it a compliment. I, I think. mean, do you want London? Do you want to be a city where writers just party, or where writers write, you know, award-winning screenplays? You know, take your pick. <laughs> where do you Where do you like to write in London? Well, 
I write at home on a treadmill desk. And what? I, and yeah, you know, to fit a bit of exercise into your day, I, okay. I tramp along on this treadmill desk. Um, I frequently work in our local cafe, The Black Walnut. <laughs> Which I have to say, best pastries this side of the Atlantic, in my experience. Are they paying, you, are they paying you tonight to say that, by the way? You're getting free pastries for the rest free of your pastries, life. But I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> um, I frequently work um, you know, at the YMCA here. I wrote one of the saddest scenes in room in the YMCA while stashing my kids in the free childcare there. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I write at uh, Earl Nichols Skating Arena, you know, at the uh, tennis playing center at Western. You know, wherever I can put my kids into a, in, into a class that lasts at least an hour, I get a bit of work done. Wherever you can get rid of your youngsters for an hour, you'll get some writing done, I understand. So, it's mutually beneficial. But is, is it ever a bit surreal to be, I mean, I think about, we were talking about, you know, the Academy Awards, we were talking about the big Hollywood red carpets. Is it ever a bit surreal to be working on these kind of potentially pretty gigantic scripts and pretty gigantic books? Here, here at home? No, uh, it's been wonderful living here. Um, I, what you really want, to, um, Trollope, the writer, said that you, no, I'm getting it wrong, I'm sorry, it was um, Flaubert, he said you must live like a bourgeois so that you can be wild in your art. So I've had a very bourgeois 21 years living here. Um, I've, I found it a really easy place to get to know people. There's this endless flow of interesting new people coming through the university where my partner teaches. So it's been a fantastic base, actually. And, you know, it's such a, a diverse place, far more diverse than people realize. Mm. Um, my kids have been in the French school system, for instance. It's a multilingual city. So um, I've had a great time here. And above all, I got to shed that burden of being Ireland's only lesbian. <laughs> you know? So... It's worth underlining the obvious that, you know, multicultural Canada allows us multiculti people to come here and drop the burden of our identity and just get on with however we want to spend our day. So God bless Canada. You know, if, you, if, if they're not giving you free pastries, I'm going to buy you free pastries for life for that. That's <laughs> the, the government of Canada should subsidize your pastries. Um, your last uh, big uh, film was, was, was Room. You just mentioned it. You know, after it scooped up a bunch of Oscar nominations, you turned the story into a play. Um, it was just announced last month, so that play is going to have its North American premiere here in London. That's right, the Grand Theatre. How does, that, how does that feel, to be able to... Fantastic. And the Grand is, is um, having an exceeding... An ex a particularly lively few years since Dennis Garnum, Garnum took it over. And um, we're going to rework the play, make it more Canadian, all Canadian cast, make the language suit Canada. Um, and it's going to be perfected here and then moved to Toronto at the Mervish. So the Grand is being the springboard for this whole North American production. You know, that's very it, what's surprising to me to that is that authors don't often, I've spoken to a number of authors who have said things to me like, well, you know what, it, it got adapted into a play, it got adapted into a film, I'm hands off, I'm just going to stay home and check my mailbox every now and then. But it seems like you, it, it's, it's important for you to be involved in these things, right? Very much. I love storytelling in any form. And um, to me, what you have to have is a real enthusiasm for adaptation. Instead of trying to protect your work from those nasty producers, you know, you have to see it as a chance to, to tell the whole story all over again, playing to the strengths of whatever the new medium is, you know, right. like what's the most theatrical thing we can do with Room, whereas the film was really naturalistic because film is really strong on that. So mm -hmm. each new art form is a chance to, you know, tear up your story and start again, and that's thrilling. So, I mean, you have this big play coming up soon. You've been nominated for an Oscar. You have a bunch of film and TV projects in development. But from what we've been saying, it sounds like your life here in London is kind of like anybody else's. <laughs> you know? Just you like know, any other Academy Award nominee. That daily grind of, did you make the kids' school lunches? No, I thought you were the ma made the kids' school lunches. That's the same worldwide. I also, I also hear you have a book club. Of course, this place is riddled with book clubs. I have, I have visited at least 15 different book clubs here in London, Ontario. Are, you know? are you, is your book club a little intimidated that you're in their book club? <laughs> Oddly not, Tom. No, no. They're not intimidated at all. They're called the Furies, and we are such an old book club. I don't mean we're personally old. We've been going for so long, I can't actually remember how old we are, and they have very little respect for my opinion over theirs. You know? <laughs> they like to ask me for, for tips about things like, does the writer pick that terrible cover, they might say to me. So they oh, want a bit of inside knowledge, but they have no respect for my views. You don't flex on them? You don't go like, hey, you know what? I, I disagree with it, and you know, Academy Award right here, Man Booker right here. Karen, you know? No, because, you know, 
every book reader is, you know, the expert on whether the book worked for them. Uh, do they ever bring up your books? Occasionally, they'll do one of my books, and it's really awkward. No, like, they I try do and your arrive books? late so that they have a chance to, you know, bitch about it over the hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> Hold on, they'll, your book club will sometimes pick your books to discuss. Yeah. That's that embarrassing, is, eh? You that, can imagine. I can imagine, yeah. yeah. You want to switch book, book clubs. Someone who <laughs> wouldn't do that for you. Um, and, and I hear you have a brand new novel coming out. That's right, yeah. Um, twice in the last five years, um, we have uh, disloyally moved away from London, Ontario and lived in France for a year. We went to Nice twice. So um, I've written a novel all about that sort of contrast between uh, North America and France. So it's about a 79-year-old man going to France on a long way to trip, and then at the last minute he gets this 11-year-old foisted on him an obnoxious 11-year-old. Mm -hmm. So it's the sort of distillation of every frustrating travel experience with my children that I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> you can make them read it and say, you did that. You did that to me. They are endlessly useful, you know? Is that so? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do they yeah know I've been squeezing books out of them for the last 15 years, you know? <laughs> I've got a whole children's series. You know, Room was inspired by, you know, dull days, child minding in London, Ontario on a Sunday morning. That feeling of, you know, motherhood is a prison. So... Honestly, everything they've done, every way they have irritated me or vice versa for the last 15 years, I have turned into prose. You know, it's the most useful thing you can do for your writing career is have kids. Have they, have, have they read any of them? Oh, and yeah, they've read the kids ones. My 11-year-old my Una kind of edits them. She's quite controlling about the plot. In fact, it doesn't really feel as if they belong to me anymore, you know? What do you mean she's controlling about the plot? Well, she'll say, no, you can't do that in book three, you know? So let me understand this. You talk about how idyllic it is to live in London, Ontario. You're getting no free pastries. Your book club's criticizing your books. And now your kid's criticizing the plot. Yeah, it sounds idyllic out here. I mean, it sounds fantastic. Um, uh, before we let you go, I wanted to ask you about this. Um, Brie Larson, who uh, is starring in the movie adaptation, who starred in the movie adaptation of Room, is now pretty much the biggest movie star in the world. In, in, I know, we all went to see her the other day. About in Captain Marvel, yeah. Yes, we posed with her cardboard cutout in the lobby. <laughs> That must be surreal for you, hey? Oh, even at the time, we could tell she was going to go far. But um, what, what I enjoyed most about Brie doing Room is that um, there was a day that she possibly drank a, little, broke, she drank a little bit of broken glass. There was, you know, there was a glass water bottle. The top what? was crumbly, and she yeah. took a swig from it. And then she said, I think I've drunk broken glass. And so they dashed her off to emergency in Toronto, and she was seen immediately. And they said, well, they couldn't really tell. It didn't show on the x-ray. So she came back, and she did the whole day's filming. See, that's the opposite of a prima donna. That's why Captain Marvel is going to go very, very far. That's how she got her powers. <laughs> um, but before we let you go, if, if people listening to this who maybe haven't been to London like I hadn't, which I got booed for, um, <laughs> haven't been to London, Ontario, what's one thing they should know about this place? Well, a friend of mine described it as the Cinderella Festival capital of Canada because our festivals are many and brilliant and they're just the right length. It'll be like, you know, three days. We've got the Forest City Film Festival, the Fringe Theatre Festival, the London, Ontario Lesbian Film Festival, um, the Sunfest. You know, just it'll be three days in one place, just enough. Whereas in your big cities, you get a bit overwhelmed with oh. two-week pop-up festivals, you yeah, know? give me a break. Our festivals are just magic. That's my favorite answer I've ever gotten to that question. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up again for Oscar-nominated screenwriter, playwright, and author on London's own Emma Donahue, everybody. There is lots more to come on the show. A live performance playing one of the songs off her latest Juno nominated album. Kaya Cater will be here. A fellow Juno nominee will also stop by. Donovan Woods will be here. We'll tell you a little bit about hockey plays into the big Juno festivities this weekend. Jim Cuddy and Natalie Spooner will be here. I'm Tom Power and this is Q live at the Junos coming to you from the London Music Hall in downtown London, Ontario. Good job, everybody. Everyone feeling good? Yeah. Oh my god, how great was Emma Donna here, eh? Yeah. Also, that, patient, that bakery is here. Give her some goddamn pastries for the love and honor of God. So, check this out. We have some, uh, we have some t shirts to give out, some CBC Juno's t shirts. I'm just gonna huck one down here. I'm gonna huck one over, maybe over this way. And I'm gonna huck one right in the middle. And I know what you're thinking. Kind of unfair that we don't, we can't, I can't, I don't have the arm to give you t-shirts. Is that what you're thinking up there? Well, guess what? <laughs> this is true. 
Guess what we picked up on our way out of Toronto? We were late because we picked up a t-shirt cannon. Deanne, Deanne, do you have it? Ladies and gentlemen, Q producer Deanne Eros, everybody. All right, so Deanne, how, how are you feeling? A little I said, how are you feeling? She said, a little nervous, and you should be too. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can get it up to those folks up there. All right, can you do this? We'll count down for three. Three. Two. One. <laughs> that was terrifying. Want to do another one? Let's do another one. All right, all right, let's do another one. All right. This is your tax dollars hard to work, everybody. Are you good? All right, these folks over here seem to want to watch your face now. Did it get up there? All right, round of applause for GM. Look good. All right, so we're, uh, we're about a minute left um, uh, until, the, until the next block. Are we good to go? Great. You guys are having fun. You guys are an amazing audience, by the way. All right. Good. So we'll just we'll bring it down a little bit. At your leisure. Coming to you live from the London Music Hall in London, Ontario, this is Q live at the Junos on CBC Radio 1, Sirius XM, and for PRI, Public Radio International. My name is Tom Power. Um, if you haven't heard of our next guest here in London before, well, I'm actually kind of jealous of you because I remember how I felt the first time I heard her music. Uh, she was like 16 years old. She was playing at a folk music conference I was at in Memphis, Tennessee. That's right, a folk music conference where all the cool kids hang out. It was like a school for people who were stuffed in their lockers. She stood on stage with her banjo. Um, and you know how like sometimes you know in the first couple of verses that what you're hearing is gonna be your favorite and it was gonna be really special, you know that feeling? This was kind of like that feeling I got in the first couple of seconds I heard her music that I knew that we were in the midst of something pretty special. So again, if this is your first time hearing her music, if this is your first time hearing this Juno nominee, I'm actually kind of jealous because I'd love to hear it again for the first time. Blending traditional music with something entirely original, making something so personal yet so universal. Her new record, Grenades, is up for a Juno for Contemporary Roots Album of the Year. And right now, I'm thrilled to welcome her on stage live in London, ladies and gentlemen, performing Meridian Ground, Kaya Cater.
Come over and have a seat. One more time, everybody. Give her a round of applause. Come on in closer, the closest one. Snuggle in. This is a bit surreal. It's nice to see you up here. It's good to see you too, Tom. Nice to see you. So, so tell me a little bit about the, the making of this record. This is largely about your, your father, right? It is, yeah. So um, my father's name is Dino Hurst, and he might be listening right now. Um, he him, was, him and Shawn Mendes together. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right? The two of them. Yeah, right. Um, he was born in a small country in the Caribbean called Grenada. Has anyone heard of Grenada? <laughs> All right, okay. Um, anyways, Grenada faced a lot of political turmoil in the late 1970s and early 80s, and he ended up coming to Canada as a refugee in 1986 alone. He was 16 years old. Uh, and, you know, it was a story that was always in the periphery, but something that I kind of ran away from or, or didn't feel was important uh, to who I am. And I think the more that I started looking at Grenada, and I actually went and visited um, the country and, and wrote there and wrote a lot of songs there, including that song, yeah. um, it just, I f it felt like coming home in a lot of ways, you know, coming home to myself, I think, more than anything. So, so given that this is about your father's journey and coming to Canada, I mean, how does he feel that you were nominated for a Juno for it? Feels brilliant. He feels. You know, does he feel good about it? Is he? Oh yeah, he's telling all his friends at work. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it, it feels good. And and actually, maybe ironically or maybe not, you know, I think for a long time I I, I wanted to be the kind of Canadian that was like the hockey playing, Scots Irish very plainly Canadian, where you can look at that person and say, oh, that's a Canadian. And, and, I, and I felt alienated, I think, from my own culture. Right. And, um, and once I went over to Grenada, I realized how deeply Canadian I was. Like, I couldn't understand my cousins when they were talking to me. And they were speaking English, that their accents were so heavy. Um, but on a deeper level, I, I realized how much of um, Canadian culture was in me. Mm. Um, and so I, I think it it was healing in a lot of ways, and, and so it's equally amazing to be nominated for an award here, yeah. of all places. I, I know that, you know, we spent a lot of time, when you, especially when you were a kid, hanging out because your mom, um, uh, Tamara, is, is, she was in charge of a bunch of folk festivals, deeply embedded into the folk music scene, uh, just like I was. And I know you spent a lot of time, I used to see you running around backstage at folk festivals, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I can only imagine that it's, it's meaningful for you to be nominated amongst some of these folks. It must be some of your heroes. 
Yeah, of course, yeah. But Questlove uh, famously said that um, once you start playing on the same stages as your heroes, they become your peers. And I think that that's, that's really meaningful to me too, is, is to be able to see them as not only people to look up to, but people who I can share a professional stage with. Well, I can tell you from, you know what a fan I am and from listening to your record, you absolutely deserve to be here and, and then some, and you have a really long, beautiful career ahead of you and I wanna thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Tom. Ladies and gentlemen, Kaya Cater. <laughs> Juno nominee for her album, Grenades. One more time for Kaya Cater. I think this is the first time a banjo's been on stage at the Junos, and I've never been so proud in my entire life. <laughs> Take that, Robert, who in grade nine made fun of me for playing the banjo. <laughs> also, you were right to do so. That was a good move. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I wonder if the competition can get a bit intense here at the Junos. I mean, it takes skill and stamina to make it all the way to the top. You might get cross-checked or pushed off your feet. I should be clear, that's not gonna happen on the big ceremony on Sunday. I don't think Sarah McLaughlin's gonna give anyone Gordie Howe's elbow. But it is probably something you'll see at the Juno Cup, which is the big charity hockey game that goes down every year at the Junos, where a team of musicians go head to head with a bunch of veteran pro hockey players. As you can imagine, it's pretty fun to watch, and it's all for a good cause to raise money for Music Counts, which supports music education for students all across Canada. The puck drops Friday night at the Western Fair District Sports Center right here in London. Catchy name. <laughs> Get a ring to it. The Western Fair District Sports Center. It is what it is, hey? Just before they lace up their skates, <laughs> they should have called it rink. <laughs> Just before they lace up their skates, I'm excited to bring out two of this year's players. Please join me in welcoming. One is the captain of the music squad, multiple Juno winner and frontman of Blue Rodeo, and Olympic gold medalist and forward for the Toronto Furies. Please welcome Jim Cuddy and Natalie Spooner. So, Jim, I want to start with you. You've played the Juno Cup how many years in a row now? <laughs> He's a well, yeah, so take them both, Jim. That's fine. That's good. You can be you and Greg tonight. It'll be great. It'll be fantastic. Um, so, you're, so, how many years have you done the Juno Cup now? I believe it's six. Somebody told me 16, so I think 16. Okay, so 16 years. Um, once again, you're up against not just Natalie here, but also Doug Gilmore, Gary Roberts. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I can tell you that on Tuesday of, of uh, this week, every year, I wonder, because this, this is an hour and a half of complete humiliation. Is that so? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, we, you know, I remember one of them, I can't remember all their names. I think Mark Napier said, if we didn't want you to ever touch the puck during the game, you would never touch the puck. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, and they don't you... mean just me, they mean the whole musician squad. <laughs> Natalie, can you verify that? Yeah, we only just play keep away from him. We never let him play. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Natalie, I'm going to put it out there. Since the Juno Cup started around 16 years ago, the musicians team has only won once. <laughs> Woo! I didn't play that year. Yeah, Shane, I want to point out Natalie didn't play that year. And the entire non-musician squad had the flu. That's what happened that year. <laughs> but, you know, you know is, it, is this exciting for you to get to play a, an event like this? For sure. I mean... Every year, I think I'm, I'm kind of starstruck at first, getting to meet these musicians who are so amazing at what they do. But um, we had practice today, actually, right before this, and just getting to see them. And um, they're such great sports, and we had a lot of fun. We got to mix the teams up today and, and meet them. And then tomorrow, it will be back to the intense competition. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's like, you know, some of my favorite musicians, I get to meet them. And then we go down the ice, and I realize I'm just going to crush them and humiliate them. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a little bit of that today, right? but tomorrow will be, will be more intense. Crush is a little bit of a harsh term. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. It was actually last year we were tied, which was miraculous, with about one and a half minutes to go. Natalie, was that about right? Yep. 
Overtime. Was it not overtime? What? Oh, it might have been overtime. That's right. Three on three. That was so unfair. Anyway, <laughs> and then Natalie Spooner scored to break all of our hearts, our collective hearts, <laughs> and made Kept Chad Brownlee look ridiculous. It was, uh, I'm not over it, apparently. Yeah, I was going to say, the important thing is you got over it there. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't know, it sounds like crushed to me, doesn't it, folks? Sounds like crushed to me. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, of course, I want to point out Natalie sitting beside you, a legend of hockey, the first to win both an Olympic gold and the Clarkson Cup in the same year. So I'll, I'll ask you this, does it ever go the other way? Are you ever a bit intimidated to step out on the ice? Are you ever a bit excited like, like Natalie was saying she is for the musicians? I'm sorry, say that again? You talk awfully fast. It's you? the Newfoundland accent. My dad used to say, Tom, the mainlanders, you don't talk fast, the mainlanders listen too slow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was listening too slow yeah, to that question. So. I thought it was directed at Natalie, so no, I was just I, waiting for her answer. I look again. <laughs> you were just like, yeah. he mentioned Natalie's name. You I was gonna fooled go, me with your gaze. I'm going to go over and have a smoke until he's done. Um, when you, do you ever get similarly, similarly intimidated uh, playing against some of these pros? Oh, it's, it's uh, an incredible experience. Now, I've done it for 16 years, yeah. so I am friends with a lot of the people that play. I also recognize that they cut their, their talent in half to come play against us. If they wanted to, they mm. could really put it on. The ones we have the most trouble with are the ones from the women's national team who are currently playing. I mean, she's, she's going to Worlds in five minutes after. So she's in game shape. Mm -hmm. And the ones that have just retired. Right. And they're the ones that don't know that, you know, don't step on us. Don't, <laughs> don't slash us. And some of them, you know, some of them don't know how strong they are. You know, there was a very funny time today. Gary Roberts went by and just pushed my son, who was on the bench. Mm. Well, he went flying back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, Gary just think that's, that's his world, yeah. you know. That's some of mice and men style stuff there. Right there you know? <laughs> it's, it's intimidating. But it is also a load of fun, and, uh, and the Music Counts is a, is a great charity that, that puts, musician, puts instruments in the hands of kids, keeps those skill programs alive. So it's all worth it. We take our lumps. <laughs> and, and Natalie, it's, it's, it's worth it for you guys as well, right? For sure. I mean, we get to come out and help raise money for Music Counts, but also enjoy the whole Juno weekend, which I think is now a weekend that I look forward to um, every year, putting it in my calendar and um, getting to skate with them. It's always such a fun time. So hopefully everyone come out to the game tomorrow. I'm sure it'll be an awesome atmosphere in the rink and one of the funnest games that we get to, to play in. Um, Jim, there's going to be a tribute to Mike Taylor of the band Walk Off the Earth, who died yeah. in December, who played the Juno Cup for many years. Um, how's he going to be remembered by you and some of the folks on the artist team? Well, there's going to be a little tribute to Mike, but also his son is playing. So Jackson, his son, is, is come to play. And, and that, um, I don't think that most of us who, who knew Mike uh, well, uh, are over it yet. That was just, right. it, just too shocking. He was an incredibly healthy guy, and, uh, um, and he was really a good <laughs> addition to our team. We're going to miss, we're gonna miss him. We're going to miss his wheels. So, uh, but I, we'll have um, some form of tribute to him during the game. We'll probably have a minute of silence. And then his son, Jackson, who I think is 16, right? Is he about 16? Yeah. 15 or 16, he's going to play in the game. So he played today, and he's, uh, he's pretty, uh, like a young colt. You know, the legs are still <laughs> a, little, a little wobbly. <laughs> it's great. Uh, before, before we let you go, uh, Natalie, I need some predictions. Final score? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> ah. Mm. You know, I think it kind of depends how tonight goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you, you guys are having a jam tonight. There's a party tonight. Yeah, right? Right. Um, but I'm going to say, like, 15 to 9. To 9? Oh, Maybe. you confident bitch. <laughs> <laughs> 15 to 9. You think a six-goal differential. <laughs> oh, man. Jim, how about you? That uh, changes everything. <laughs> Final score, Jim? What do you think? 15-14. For who? And I score For the them. winner? They win. I understand. They are the superior power. You know what, Jim? But it'll be darn close, I'll tell you. All I'll say is no matter how bad the score gets, you got to try. Oh, oh. that? <laughs> Finally, Tom, somebody used that joke. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Cuddy and Natalie Spooner, everybody. Good luck Thank to you, Will. Thank you guys for coming. The Juno Cup takes place this Friday, which means tonight, if you happen to listen on the radio, it all goes down on the Western Fair District Sports Center here in London. Let's give it up one more time for Natalie Spooner and Jim Cuddy.
Okay, so speaking of stiff competition, <laughs> uh, we've already had one of this year's Juno nominees for Songwriter of the Year on stage. How about we bring out another? I like how we gave you an option there to say no. No, one's enough, pretty good. Uh, this nominee splits his time between home in Toronto and in Nashville, Tennessee, where he's a sought-after songwriter for country stars like Tim McGraw. Some of the biggest stars on Canadian country radio were written by him. Sometimes I just listen to Canadian country radio and I just text him when I go, that you? That you? That you? Most of the time? Yeah. Uh, though as badly as Nashville wants him, I'm happy to say they can have him. He's ours. This is the second time he's been nominated for Songwriter of the Year at the Junos. And this year, his latest record, Both Ways, is up for Contemporary Roots Album of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend and yours, Donovan Woods. We got like we got like two minutes together. Yeah. Before you got to sing a song, Jim Let's Cuddy, see. hey? I know, right? Jim Cuddy, buddy, always. He's a good-looking dude. Oh, yeah. He makes me feel like the before picture. <laughs> you know what I mean? For like five easy payments of nine ninety-nine, you can go from this to Jim Cuddy. You know? I what wouldn't. I mean? Yeah. How are you doing? How does it feel to be nominated for a Juno? I'm. It's ex always exciting to be invited to the party. It's fun to come to the party. I should point out that you just. I feel like there was some kind of passive aggression in there. Are you excited about being nominated for a Yes, I know I am. It's fun to come to the party. <laughs> Sometimes when the party's getting a bit long, you go, let's go back to the house now. But it, it's fun to go to the party, without a doubt. And it's close to my hometown, so I, I, it's exciting for me to... Do you, do you remember the year that we were, we were invited to go to a bunch of after parties from yeah. the Junos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Donovan and I were invited to a bunch of fancy shebang after parties, and he and I and the host of Radio 2 Mor CBC Music Morning, Raina Doris, we sat in the hotel bar and ate nachos for four hours. <laughs> I think we had the best time. We couldn't rally. We couldn't rally. We tried to rally, and <laughs> we couldn't rally. Um, I should point out, Joe, Juno nominations are exciting and all, but you, you and your uh, partner, Meredith, just uh, welcomed a new little baby. Is we that did. Right? We had a new baby girl, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So I'll ask you what I, what I asked Afi. You know, how, how have you find the process of songwriting with a new kid in the house? Well, it's difficult. You, can't, you really can't say to your partner, oh, I'm off to sit in a uh, room and think about my feelings. Don't bother me up there. <laughs> I'll be up there just thinking about how I feel about certain things. Yeah. And <laughs> so that becomes not an option anymore. You just have to kind of sneak it in when you can sneak it in. Like you, writing without really noticing your writing, which is uh, hard to do, but once you figure out how to do it, you can do it. It's doable. Uh, last question. I, I asked it to Afi, who was... That's it. This is so short. What's the... I'll tell you one thing. Okay. Blame right. Cuddy. I know. <laughs> Feels like you and me are lost together, bud. <laughs> All right, so get out of here, get out of here. How are you feeling about being uh, 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 up for an award, uh, you and Shawn Mendes? Shawn Mendes, yeah, well, I mean, I'll tell you, once you get to the Juno Awards, you just, you feel like you're famous, and then you get there, there's a whole other red carpet for Shawn Mendes, and, <laughs> and uh, there, as well, there should be, he's a beautiful man, he's very tall, and one of the other fellas who nobody's talking about in that category wrote the song Havana, oh no, no, like Frank Dukes. That guy should win, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I know. That song's amazing. So we'll see what happens. No, you know what, I man? I think you got a pretty good shot. How about you hear a song from Donovan? Everyone down with that? All right, get up there, get up there, buddy. Nice to see you. Donovan and I talk about having to go to Juno's red carpets, and we have to. We're, we're like we're like those people who have to walk out on stage, and they have to hold up a sign and yell at the camera people about who we are. <laughs> like we walk out, they're like, "It's Tom Bauer and Donovan Woods," and they go, "Who?" and they go, "CBC, CBC." And they take your picture just to be polite. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to perform a song, the great Donovan Woods. Have this yet? Uh oh. Uh oh. Nothing yet, bud. Look at the crew coming up here. They're all excited about it. That's the kind of song that's going to get you that Juno, man, right there. 
Sorry about that. But it fixed it. It did fix it. Sorry. You know, it worked. What is going on? It sounds like it might be your guitar. Want to put a mic up in front of it? We're not blaming Cuddy. I'm already going to get beaten up behind the London <laughs> Music Hall tonight by Jim Cuddy and Basil Donovan are just going to kill me, so. What do you want to do here? This is going to be really interesting on the radio, don't you think? <laughs> this is going to be a really good radio moment. You can't fake it. Can we get a round of applause for everyone at the London Music Hall tonight doing such an incredible job? We'll try this again here. It's gonna happen here, guys. Don't worry about it. What's going on, bud? Getting any level? Hey, guys. How's it going? Maybe we can get you another acoustic guitar or something, maybe. Oh, yeah, come on up. Ready? totally fine. It's not what they want. But I don't want to be just some great escape for you. But I don't want to be just some great escape for you. And I don't want to hold some kind of holy life for you. And I'm going to fail. I 
can love you like somebody else loves you If that's what you need oh, Let me hold you like somebody else holds you If you don't want me But I don't want to be Just some great escape for you Just some great escape for you And I don't want to hold Some kind of holy life for you And I'm going to fail But it's nice to try Man, it's been nice to try It's been to try it's been Thank you. one more time for Jonathan Woods everybody give him a round of applause still so much more to come at the Junos Donovan's going to hit the road. You can catch him on tour across Canada and the U.S. through to April. He'll be kicking things off in Winnipeg and heading west from there this week. Coming up on the show, one of the Juno nominees for Comedy Album of the Year is going to bring some live stand-up to the stage in just a minute. Shanti Morostica is here. And Snotty Nose Redskins when the Junos come back from London, Ontario. You guys are incredible. That's the first time it's ever happened on one of these live shows. You guys handled it so well. Thank you so, so much. I think you deserve a couple of t-shirts. God, it feels like, it feels like Gladiator or something like that. This is the best idea we've ever had. Ready? Yeah, that's right. That's right. We got two more. Ooh, throw it up. All right, Mitch, want to throw one up there to these folks up here? Yeah, all right. All right, all right. There we go. You guys having fun so far? I mean it, man. Like, we, th those moments are kind of unavoidable. You never know what's going to happen. And you guys all handled it really well. But I want to give a shout out one more time to the London Music Hall for just handling it really well. Um, I'm so excited for you to hear uh, uh, Shanti up next. They are incredible. Um, we're gonna have a, a live jam or not a jam uh, after that. You're gonna hear a performance from Snotty Nose Res Kids. Um, and it, it means an awful lot. It means, are we ready to go? Okay, we're on to our last block. We're almost done, we got a half hour left. Feeling good, London? We got energy left. We're gonna do this. We're gonna make this happen. All right, all right. XM 169 and from PRI or Public Radio International. My name is Tom Power. Uh, this past year has been a big one for the guests you're about to meet. They were crowned the winner of the Sirius XM Top Comic Competition. They performed a series of hour-long shows at JFL 42, Toronto's edition of the Just for Last Festival. And to top it off, they released their very first comedy album, which is nominated this weekend for a Juno for Comedy Album of the Year. Please give it up for Shanti Morostica. because I got nominated for a fucking Juno! <laughs> yeah, thanks! 
That's not my mom. <laughs> I, I, I hate to start off on a cheesy note, but I, I couldn't be here. I would be such a nervous wreck if I didn't have my partner. My boyfriend's here with me this weekend. He's right there. Just give him a round of applause. He's such an amazing man. Give him a wave. There, there he is. Keep looking. He's so shy. There he is. Keep looking. To the depths of your imagination. Was that fun? <laughs> My boyfriend died in a pantsuit fire when I was born this gay. Yeah. <laughs> that was so cute. We were all straight for a minute. We all had rights. We were like, what? <laughs> that was really funny to watch all of you. You were like, boyfriend? That's a weird name for a girl. <laughs> Honestly, what would be going on? Like, what's going on with my look if I'm not a homo? Did you think of that? Like, I have a rat tail and every shirt I own looks like it owns a used car lot, but you were like, yeah, they're straight. <laughs> like, either, either I'm gay or like, what's going on here? I look like a, I either, I feel like I look like a drunk dad trying to find his kids at a music festival. <laughs> Jaden, you know? <laughs> like I'm either gay or I'm like Guy Fieri, the college years. <laughs> that was too real, okay? Eh? I'm either gay or I'm like uh, Justin Bieber's twin aunt. <laughs> it's so funny, like grown men will be like, hey, are you Justin Bieber? And I'm like, thank you, he's so thin, what? Sorry? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I also get mistaken for Miley Cyrus sometimes. When people are really drunk, I guess. I'm like, they're like, hey, are you Miley Cyrus? I'm like, yeah, it's me, 200 pound Miley Cyrus. <laughs> okay, like 196, but I have like 40 tampons in. No. <laughs> Thank you. Well, like, on what planet do I look like Miley Cyrus? Like, I would wreck that ball. <laughs> just like, yeah, it's just me, Miley Cyrus, stealing mayonnaise from a Dollarama. <laughs> I'm so wild. <laughs> I'm obviously really proud to be gay because I can't stop talking about it, but I'm not only proud to be a queer person, I'm also proud to be a trans person. Um, oh my God, <laughs> London, get here. <laughs> Thank you. There's like seven people that, we don't know what that is. Um, are you a bus? What's happening? Um, yeah, I'm a transit system. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm the first out trans person to be nominated for Comedy Album of the Year. It's a huge deal for me. Thank you. <laughs> I, um, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> Uh, it, I, I hope that like one day, I'm not medically transitioned yet, obviously. I hope one day that like men understand me better. Uh, like at the back of the room, I'm a really handsome man. You get to the middle of the crowd, you know, you uh, see my face and you hear my voice and you're like, what a, what a pretty boy. <laughs> you get a little bit closer and you're like, where are your boobs? What's going on? <laughs> like men don't know how to react to me right now and I hope that changes one day. Like right now, men in the street will be like, excuse me, sir, sweetie, I'm so sorry you're a woman. <laughs> Me too, take my breasts. <laughs> Love them on you, hate them on me. But <laughs> I also know I'm uh, not a woman because I just never got it. I was pretending to be a woman my entire life. And I can say like, I know that I'm not a woman because when women drink together, when you drink together, what, what's going on? <laughs> women will be like, okay, so we're meeting at Amber's house at like 6.30 to pregame. So like, meet you there. I'm like, okay, 6.30, we're pregaming at 6.30. You lick the side of a Mike's Hard Lemonade and you're literally dead. Where are we going, a funeral home? Are we getting there in a hearse? What are we gonna do in the next five hours? But pre-gaming for women just means getting ready. So you go to their house and it's just 40 women in a bathroom competing for the mirror like, Ladies, leave your man at home. The club is full of ballers and the pocket's full grown. And all the scene and fiend again, a fiend. Cause then I'm like, I put my t-shirt on, I'm ready to go. <laughs> And then a scene of a thing. Cause it like seven layers of mascara, we walk in the club on your eyelids, let's go already. And then you get to the club, do you go to there to lose each other or find each other? I'm asking. Cause as soon as women go to the club, they're like, where's T? 
Tiffany. Like, you're all named Tiffany. Was she wearing a hat? Uh, you... <laughs> but then it's like, when you drink with men, they're like, oh, he passed out. Take his phone. He doesn't deserve an Uber. And they'll kick you into a ditch. When you drink with women, they're like, not one of us rides away. Like, it's, that's the whole night. It becomes this, like, cute, slutty, where's Waldo? And they're like, let's get her. <laughs> From the bar. They find one Tiffany, lose another. But you're getting wasted the whole time. You're like, I looked under the bottom of every shot glass and she wasn't there. In the bathroom, like, Tiffany, Tiff, Tiff. He doesn't deserve you, Cheryl. Like, that's not a place to meet friends. But it's the whole night until it's like 40 women corralled around a hot dog cart. Like, you're the beating heart of this hot dog cart all chugging back hot dogs like you haven't eaten in a month. And you're just like, But something in you is still looking for your friend. You're like writing an SOS and catch up, just like, Tiffany! And then one of them will get a text and be like, one sec, I'm so sorry, you guys. You guys are gonna be so mad at me. You guys, it turns out I've been Tiffany this whole time. I'm Shanti Morastica. Thanks so much, London Music Hall. Shanti, that was awesome. Thank you. I was just over there. Um, you know, a lot of stuff happened this year. The Juno nomination, you got the Sirius XM Top Comic Prize. You know, what is it that stands out most for you in the past 12 months of your life? Um, I guess coming out to my parents. I came out and I don't have to sit that close. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I came out to my parents in September, which was really me coming out to everyone because my parents are my best friends. So coming out as trans and just being able to actually feel like myself for the first time ever was the biggest thing. <laughs> oh my God. Shut up. No. Um, this, this is only the second year that the Junos have had uh, the, the Comedy Award after uh, three decades without it. So, you know, what does it mean to have this award back for Canadian comedy? It means that we could maybe have a star system in our country. I feel like everybody that is amazing here just has to move to the States for us to care about them. So, hopefully with this and Top Comic as well, that uh, people will appreciate our homegrown talent and come and see it while it's here so we don't have to leave. I don't want to be a trans man under Trump's administration, so keep me here. How are you planning on, uh, how are you planning on celebrating if you take home the Juno? If I take it home? Um, can you drink out of it? I don't know what it's shaped like. You can drink out of anything if you're industrious enough. You know? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. I'm an alcoholic, I know that. <laughs> um, I, my mom's my date, so we're, I'm going to get her red wine drunk, and uh, we're going to take some Instagram videos. I don't know. I'm not... I, I guess I'm just gonna cry a lot because if I won, it would be such a huge win for trans community and for the queer community to see somebody, to see ourselves at all. You don't see yourself as a trans person, so it'd just be huge. Um, well, good, good luck and congrats. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Tom Power. Shanti Morosica, everybody. <laughs> Winnipeg born, Toronto based comic. Their comedy album is called The Shanti Show. It's up for comedy album of the year at the Junos this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, Shanti Morosica. You know when you're driving somewhere, the right song comes on the radio, it's a beautiful day, you roll the windows down, you turn it up, and the song that's playing, my friends, that song is a jam. You know when you hear a song and you turn it off as soon as it comes on the radio and you lock your windows tight, that's not a jam. So for the past few years, starting back when I was on the CBC Radio 2 morning show, the artist formerly known as CBC Radio 2, I should say, now is uh, CBC Music, we've been playing a little game called Jam or Not a Jam, and the way it works is we get two or three people together, we play them a little bit of a song, and they have to decide, is it a jam or not a jam? So I was thinking, because apparently the concept is a little tough, we'll do a little dry run with you guys first. How do you feel about that? All right. So take a listen to this. All right, so that's the 1982 Juno winner for Single of the Year, Loverboy with Turn Me Loose. By applause, is that a jam? Yeah. Or not a jam? 
four people, but one dude that went, no! <laughs> Who happens to be the bass player for Loverboy. Um, you guys get the drill. Let's bring our special guests out into the stage to play a special edition of Juno, Jam or Not a Jam. Please welcome two of our finest writers in the country who you've seen on tonight on stage already, and the host of CBC London's Afternoon Drive show, Emma Donahue, Donovan Woods, and Chris Della Torre. <laughs> Everyone feeling good? Chris, you feeling good? I feel very good. Are you ready for this? I am turning it loose. <laughs> That song sounds like a Gillette ad to me. Yeah. You know, it yeah. sounds like, yeah. Anyway. Well, you've already established that you're not crazy about Loverboy. Off to a bad start. Don't get the crowd on your side. I get it. Don't worry about it. So first jam or not a jam, Emma, this is a, a, from a record that won album of the year back in 1995. I believe that's before you, you settled in Canada, right? So, I don't know why that was pointed out, but apparently it was worth mentioning. <laughs> but you must know this one. Take a listen. That is Celine Dion and the power of love. <laughs> you know, Emma, I'm gonna start with you. Jam or not a jam? You're making me insult a Canadian icon first thing <laughs> by saying that sucks and it's not a jam. Oh! <laughs> wow. It's not a jam, really? Wow. Chris? I stand in solidarity with my fellow Londoner, Emma. <laughs> Not a jam. Not a jam. Chris, not a jam, It's really? too big. It's too much. Too much, this man. It's crazy. Doesn't this blow in your mind right now? I can't believe it. What's <laughs> happening? Donovan, where are you on power? That's I'm... Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs> she should do whatever she wants as a jam. <laughs> That's a jam, without a doubt. Power of love? Oh, my. Come on. Now we're off to Come a good... on. The power of love? <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs> it's a question I ask myself every day. All right, lots of agreement, disagreement so far. Um, let's go to our next one. I know where I belong. Nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> oh my God. Well. I do Axl Rose on that one, and I don't know why. That is, uh, that is son of CBC radio host and noted musician Tal Bachman with She's So High. Chris, you're up first. Oh, man. I reluctantly say that is a jam, and I say, re I say reluctantly because I've been listening to that song for more than 20 years, and it still sounds like he has an accent to me that no one can figure out what it is. <laughs> the way he sings, like, Aphrodite. Yeah. No one talks like that. Like, that is, that is a made-up sound. It's like him and Rain Maida, those are the two people who sing like that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. At any moment, he's going to go, ow a woo hoo in the middle <laughs> yeah. of that song. <laughs> ow a woo hoo um, Emma, I'll go to you. Jam or not a jam? I've never heard it before, and it's a total jam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It's going, you know. You, should, you ever listen to that Vinyl Tap show, the Randy Bachman show? He talks about these songs. Every song was written by him in 1931. It's incredible. Um, oh, I'm going to get so fired for that, man. You have no idea how fired I'm going to get for that. Um, <laughs> Donovan, finally to you. She's so high, Tal Bachman. Jamming on a jam. Yeah, well, you can hear how many people are singing along. It's a jam. Well, whatever. It's great. You know, it's his only real song. He doesn't really... But as a songwriter, do you need to write another song after you write She's So High? No. <laughs> Just go to an island and relax. You did it. <laughs> Everybody knows it. It's a hit. Hall of Fame. Done. All right, so I think this one's going to cause a little bit of division. Take a listen. Chad Kroger, lead singer of the band Nickelback, with Hero. 
Chris? From the Spider-Man 2 soundtrack. Uh, From the Spider-Man 2 soundtrack. Well, I don't know. Point I mean, do the booths speak for themselves? I don't know. What do you think? You Be your own man here. What do you think? No, here's, here's what I'm saying. What I say is, number one, that was on the Spider-Man soundtrack. I love Spider-Man. Number two, they're from Alberta, which is where I'm from. Uh, so I'm going to go with jam. Huh? It's Nickelback, but it's a jam. Emma? Well, I would say it left me cold, but I was moved by Donovan's response to it. So that's a secondary jam. A second, yeah, a jam, yeah. A jam by proxy. A vicarious jam. <laughs> yeah, right. A jam by proxy. <laughs> I have eaten some vicarious jam, made me very sick. (laughs) Made me very sick. He was writhing in his seat. Yeah, Yeah, right. Donovan, Chad Kroger, the Krogs, jam without a jam. Nothing wrong. Nothing's broken in that song. It's a hit. It's a hit song. It's a vibe. Whatever. You don't like it? Fine. That's a hit song. (laughs) Hero can say, I'm not going to stand here away. (laughs) I like it too, man, for my money. All right, we're going back in time to 1984, Music Video of the Year, this year's Juno Lifetime Achievement Award winner, so keep that in mind, please. (laughs) That is Corey Hart and... I thought you guys were going to say it. That's Corey Hart and... Sunglasses at night. Uh, Emma, do you know that jam? I looked it up in preparation for this <laughs> session. I thought I have to know the Juno's people, and I would, could barely hear it tonight through the screams, so clearly it is a jam. All right, good, good, well established. Chris? No question, a jam. And again, what accent is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, the, is that a Canadian, Same is thing, that the yeah. 80s Canadian accent? Yeah. I don't know. It's true. I wear my sunglasses, <laughs> sorry, glasses. I'm kind of doing, you know, so I can. Donovan, how about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) All right, we got, we have to wrap, but we got time for one more quick one, the quickest one in the world. Take a listen. All right, we got time left, according to my director, for one word. Let's go across. Chris, jam or not a jam? Super jam, total jam. I should point out that's Shania Twain and Man, I Feel Like a Woman. Emma? Ultra jam. Donovan? Yeah. (laughs) That is Jam or Not a Jam, Juno edition. Give it up for Emma Donahue, Donovan Woods, and CBC London's own Chris Delatore. All right. So we've had quite the live show here today in London, have we not? And we wanted to wrap it all up with something really special. This next group's uh, big release, The Average Savage, was shortlisted for the Polaris Music Prize. Now that record is up for Indigenous Music Album of the Year at the Junos this weekend. With another album on the way this year, a big tour set for the spring and summer, these guys have quickly proven themselves to be one of the great next hip-hop acts coming out of Canada right now. From the West Coast Heisland Nation, here to perform their track, Broke Boy Ambitions, please welcome Darren Young D. Metz and Quentin Young Tribe's nice, snotty nose res kids. Ladies and gentlemen, this song is for the boy with the, the spirit so free and the mind that's ahead of his time. Give me ears and listen. The song is called Broke Boy Ambitions. It go like this. To the white man, he making noise. They say boys will be boys. He's got a powerful voice And his mama made him use it Man, he never had a choice Keep drumming, little drummer boy Go! Keep drumming, little drummer boy Go! To the rest, good riddance Here's a broke boy's ambition I pack my peace pipe So I can put my mind to rest As I walk in pure darkness Out the side, out of mind, I guess In the middle of the field Was this little boy, right? I couldn't believe my eyes It was midnight Long black braid with his legs crossed Staring at the stars with his shirt off Of life, right? People walk the earth and they're blinded by the light Cause they think they're doing right by Living out this white line that says we'll be alright But they're worried that they might die We got this hunger for more People fighting wars without a clue of what the fight's for They're fighting for a peace, right? Man, pass me the peace pipe and tell me what you think of that Woo! To the white man, he making noise They say boys will be boys 
got a powerful voice And his mama made him use it, man, he never had a choice Keep drumming, little drummer boy, go Keep drumming, little drummer boy, go To the rest, good riddance Here's a broke boy's ambition, hey Here's a broke boy's ambition He don't got a nine to five, but he clearly driven And he's smoother than the limousine Living free and shit, and the visions that he sees If you see it, you would listen to him Tell him what you see Everything is permanent if money makes the world spin But money isn't everything, it's just the way you're thinking That destroyed us in the first place Superficial lamp, always thinking about the worst case Like death over living And prison by religion locked down in a system Built for division over race to embrace Being terrified by terrorism Shoot us on the television I should've known To the real world, the unemployed Begging for some change, I ain't talking about no coin Just a little red kid from the res, nothing less Hungry for success, but a vision kept the fed boy Woo! To the white man, he making noise They say boys will be boys He's got a powerful voice And his mama made him use it, man, he never had a choice Keep drumming, little drummer boy, go Keep drumming, little drummer boy, go To the rest, good riddance Here's a broke boy's ambition hey. The now we walk is a slow world Ooh. If you ain't heard, it's a cold world Ooh. Hell yeah, Jermaine, and what's a young gonna do with life a circle in the drain? I got a dollar to my name and a dream in my picture frame. Panorama, so I rock a dream catcher. Started my next chapter with these bottled up emotions that I gather. They be not give a hoot like Mr. Matters. Been trying to squeeze a dollar out of time, but I ain't even got a cent, man. It's starting to take a toll on me after young DZ went cut easy with the drive. I said, I'm a R.A.P. rhythm and poetry, bro. I love the bass, but not the type of nubs your face, but the type that got my bounce to the ounce ride. Right. Finna be self made without the dough. While you sleeping, we stay woke, that's why. Till the white man, he making noise. They say boys will be boys. He's got a powerful voice, and his mama made him use it, man, he never had a choice. Keep drumming, little drummer boy, go! Keep drumming, little drummer boy, go! To the rest, good riddance! Here's a broke boy to fish <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Snotty Nose Reds Kids. Thank you. What a beautiful number. Well, that is all the time we have today. Oh my God, we made it. A big thanks to Bahamas and his bands. Emma Donahue, Kaya Cater, Natalie Spooner, Jim Cuddy, Donovan Woods, Shanty Morostica, Chris Della Torre, and Snotty Nose Rez Kids. Thanks to the London Music Hall for having us. Thank you to the Q staff for making it all happen. Thanks to all the volunteers who helped out, and thank to you, everybody at the London Music Hall, for coming out. You'll be able to watch all of today's performances at cbc.ca slash Q. Don't forget to catch the Big Juno Ceremony, hosted by Sarah McLaughlin live this Sunday night on CBC. I'll be hosting the Juno Songwriter Circle Sunday afternoon, so we'll see you there. Live from beautiful London, Ontario. Thanks a lot for joining us. My name is Tom Power. This has been Q. Later on. We did it. We did it. Um, we did it. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for coming out. Now that we're off the air, I can say this. Holy shit. I was, I was so... My boss is still here, so I can't curse too much. But, and there's some kids here, so I can't curse too much. But I was... I like the guy who just went, Nah! I don't mind. I'm nine years old. Curse in front of me all you want. He's apparently Blackbeard the Pirate, too. I don't know why that's the case. Um, uh, all, all jokes aside, it's, it's been amazing to be here. Um, again, I spend most of my time uh, in, a, in a dark uh, room, flanked by some of the greatest producers the radio's ever had, but like, we kind of you know, exist in this kind of quiet little room, and when we're actually able to get out and see the people who listen to the show every single day, it means the absolute world to me. So thanks a lot for coming out.
Um, I also, um, I also want to thank you, you know, at a time when the industry is changing and media is changing and I'm definitely listening to things in a different way than I ever have before and you have so many options in front of you from all over the world. Um, I just want to say thanks for supporting public broadcasting. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, None of this, none of this would have been able to happen. I am, I am far by far the least important person on, on here tonight. Please give a round of applause to everyone who works on Q, everyone on the video team, everyone on the digital side of things uh, for making this happen. And uh, yeah, I, th I, think, I think that's it. We can all probably go home or at least go to the A&W window and order a... I was watching that all night nervous that someone in the show was like, this is boring. I'm gonna get a teen burger. <laughs> no, it's better. Um, so, so thanks a lot for coming out. And, and nothing you guys want to know about me. If you do, uh, we're gonna be over there in the corner by that little sign over there. Um, we can say hello afterwards and take a picture or, or have a chat and you can ask me anything you want. But what's that, what'd you say? Where's my banjo? It's against the Broadcasting Act for me to bring my banjo out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got brought in about 10 years ago, they were like. No one this pale can play that instrument on stage. Well, so thank you, sir. You know, I don't do it for the money, but I appreciate it. Um, this is my yearly paycheck from the CBC. That's very nice. That's good, that's good. Hundreds of dollars a year. Anybody, uh, any, uh, any other questions? Am I playing hockey tomorrow? Look at me. I'm cut like a bag of milk. No, no. I'm gonna stew what everyone else does, sit on the side and eat fries. Um, okay, so how about instead of going home, we bring Bahamas back up and play another song for you guys. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Bahamas. I feel bad about giving Shawn Mendes a, hit, a bad hard time earlier. I really do. I wasn't right. cool. I just, I don't know, I was trying to sound cool in front of the young people. It just came out wrong. <laughs> this didn't work. Anyway, sorry, Sean. Okay, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a song here. It's, uh, well, it's, it's not very exciting, but I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. Stay right here. I'll be coming home soon I just emptied my lungs to some empty room So much to say, but I just hold my tongue The whole world's for the taking, yes I'ma get me some But I can do, I can do no